Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. <clears throat> Today, I uh, I wanted to do some soldering. Um, my new wire arrived. My bodge wire. Uh, I got three sizes, thanks to the recommendation from my mate Bruce. I know Bruce, but Bruce doesn't know me. Bruce has a YouTube channel called Brankus Creations, and he does refurbs of old computers, old Apple Macs and things like that. And I've watched a couple of Bruce's videos and learned a trick or two. Um, and he recommended three sizes of wire and a particular type of wire to use for doing restorations, trace restorations on motherboards, circuit boards. I'm going to need to be doing a lot of those for um, Xbox refurbishing. Uh, the original Xbox often has trace rot, um, so you need to fix it. Um, and uh, Bruce made some suggestions, not with, with regard to the Xbox, but just generally um, what size wires to use uh, and what type of wire to use. So the type of wire that we'll be using is um, it's enamel coated. Um, the enamel's an inch later, so uh, it, it stops the, uh, the, the wire from conducting accidentally. But the enamel also burns off very easily when you use the soldering iron on it. Um, so you can just burn away the insulation at the ends of the wires and then get a joint with just those points uh, exposed. Um, I also got uh, recently some new tweezers. Um, <coughs> I was uh, playing around with some solder lugs actually that arrived um, and they're really small and the um, tweezers that I had that I was trying to use, uh, they were just cheapo, you know, uh, tweezers and they, the, <laughs> the heads wouldn't connect quite exactly right. So what I really needed was some precision tweezers and uh, I, I got two lots actually, one was called industrial tweezers uh, and those are these uh, Tawot, Tawot. Um, and they look okay um, but honestly I haven't used them this is them a set of five uh, SA11, SA12, SA13, SA14, SA15 so it's a set of five and they look like really great tweezers <laughs> um, but they'll probably just sit here under my desk in their case uh, because I don't think I'm going to need them because I also got these ones and these are great. Uh, they're CHP brand. Now I forget who does CHP but it's like a sub brand of some other brand. Uh, I'll put the links in the in the blog post. I'll, I'll dig those out for you. But uh, I got myself, there's two here and there's uh, three more of them, or oh, there's two more of them here and there's another one floating around somewhere. Anyway, I got a five pack of these things and they're all the same. Uh, they're the uh, 3C it says, SA3C. So uh, these are great. These are really good. Um, I've been using them to do uh, bits and pieces and they're very precise. Uh, and they're very fine pointed and it's really great to have two pairs so you can you know move things around especially when you're installing a bodge wire which is why I mentioned them because I'll be using them today so um, I have it I have a scrap circuit board here actually I was practicing on it earlier um, and it I just cleaned it up so it's just a, it's just an old bit of uh, uh, printed circuit board um, we're, we're going to uh, join a couple of traces. We're going to join a couple of points as if we were doing a trace restoration. Um, we'll use the three different types of wires. So uh, more on that. As I said earlier, these uh, sizes were the ones that Bruce recommended in one of his videos. I've completely lost which video it was where Bruce said 
what uh, um, uh, sizes he uses, but I, I, I made some notes. So um, assuming the veracity of the notes, that is to say, assuming my notes were correct, uh, then the three sizes we had, uh, small, medium, and large. And when I say large, <laughs> these wires are tiny, they're so small. So the large ones, uh, well the large ones 0.31 millimeters, uh, which for our American friends is 0 0.012 inches. So um, that's the big one. And then the medium one is 0.16 millimeters, which is 0 0.006 inches. And then the small one is 0 0.07 millimeters which is 0 0.003 inches. Anyway, I'll put all that in the blog post that goes with this video. Um, but basically, we've got our bodge wires, small, medium, and large. Now, mine are installed here. So I've got the small one at the back, medium here, and large here. And I've got them set up so that they can dispense, and they come out down the bottom here, uh, and I can just cut off a little bit when I need it. I got uh, one kilo each, so pretty much a lifetime supply of bodge wire for me. I, 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 I mean, that's probably literally true. I, it's going to take me decades to get through this uh, wire, I reckon. So hopefully um, I've bought the right stuff and it's the right size and it's the right type and everything works out. I have already had a bit of a play with it, so I think it's okay. I don't know, I, I kind of look at it and I think that the large wire, you know, would probably always do. Um, but I'm just uh, going with what Bruce said. Um, and uh, so I've got all three and I, I guess he's got more experience than I do. So I'll see what my experience teaches me in the future when I actually start to do this stuff in anger. Tonight we're not actually doing anything serious, we're just doing uh, a test a test run uh, on a bit of, uh, you know, practice board. So um, let's jump over to the bench and uh, turn the soldering iron on and get started. All right, here we are on the bench. Now, I made some notes about what we'll be doing. Um, we're going to take 28A to... 21B, and then we'll take 21B to 17A, and then we'll take 17A to 14C. That looks like it'll be a bit of fun. Uh, and ideally, uh, that all the points will line up, so there should be continuity between uh, each point um, when we're done, and there should be uh, no um, conduct conductivity uh, at any other point in the circuit. So we'll, we'll test around with the continuity beeper thing and see how we go. Now, uh, I might just bump you back over uh, to this view and uh, cut off a bit of tape. Can you see that? Probably not. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to cut ourselves a small bit and we're going to cut ourselves a medium bit. We're going to cut ourselves a big bit. So there's uh, three bits of wire on the bench there, um, which we'll be using. Um, so, oh, oh, you're not on the bench. There we go. Three back on the bench. This is them. Now, um, can you see those? I'm not sure. Um, I tell you what, um, I get to show off my new microscopes today. So uh, let me show you. Um, just uh, get that ready and pop you over there. So what we're looking at now is uh, the circuit board on the mat. And then you can see here is the, uh, 
the board under the microscope. So you can see that up real close. And we can actually even do one better. Um, if we pop that over there, um, and then uh, put him there, um, we can have a really good close-up squeeze at that board. So there's point twenty-eight A um, that will be will be soldering. So um, we've got the two microscopes. The one you're looking at now, um, that's the really high magnification for a very uh, very very close-up look at things. Um, and then the other magnify uh, the other microscope. Uh, is just a, a, a bit of a look at what's going on uh, on the bench. Um, and of course, you've got the, the context here with the, with the video and the mat. Uh, and I can throw you over to... Uh, I probably should have used this view when I was picking the wire off the thing, although that's kind of obscured by uh, this thing, which is my um, thermal cam. And we'll have a look at that some other day. So, uh, let's just jump you back over here. Now, uh, first things first, actually, uh, while I'm doing this, I might just pop you over here. Or what about there? All right, I'm just uh, gonna put on my gloves. Now I've got some glasses as well, I, I don't know if I'll be wearing them, I probably will be wearing them, might as well put them on now. So, uh, oh I've got to turn the soldering iron on. Now today we'll be using the soldering iron, we won't be using the soldering tweezers, we won't be using the hot air gun, and we won't be using the desoldering gun either. If we do do any desoldering, I'll just use the little vacuum thing, this thing, and you've probably seen one of these, you put it in and you pop it out. So if we need to do any desoldering, it'll only be a small amount, so we'll just use that tool. Now, I've got my gloves on, uh, and my uh, glasses, I did mention these. So uh, these allow me to pop this down, and then I can just see the circuit board a bit better. Um, we'll try and um, we'll try and keep things on on uh, camera for you, um, but I'll probably work directly. I won't work off the cameras. Uh, is my plan, so I'll work directly, and the cameras will just show you what's going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to install small, medium, large bodge wires. Uh, I gave you the dimensions of those earlier. Uh, those were diameters, of course. Um, uh, after we've installed the wires, we'll um, apply some solder mask to cover up our work. So the idea is that we're doing a thorough job of trace repair, um, but it's all just uh, for demonstration purposes and for me, just for practice. I, I haven't got a lot of experience doing this yet, doing this sort of thing. So um, uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just learning. Uh, and uh, this is just a test run. <sighs> I've made a mess of my solder here. If you just bear with me for a second, I'll fix that up. Dear me, I'm a little bit weary. I had a nap this morning and it was great. Actually, I had to go to the uh, pathologist for a blood test and it was a fasting blood test, which means I spent my whole mo morning starving, hungry, waiting for a blood test. And uh, after it, I went straight to McDonald's for a sausage and egg McMuffin breakfast. Now, I 
I've chopped myself off a bit of solder. I don't know if you can see that. Um, although mostly I'll be putting the solder on the tip. Anyway, I'm still working out my technique. We got my, uh, I've got my two tweezers here. I've got my blade. Also, I should say again, my mate Bruce from Brankus Creations, who I mentioned earlier, he recommended these. I think they're called Swan Morton. Yeah, Swan Morton. And there, there's uh, different types of blades. I'll put you over uh, here. So these are. This is my uh, Swan Morton. Uh, I think this is the 15C. And I've also got a 15 and uh, some other size, maybe a 10. I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, this retractable blade. Um, can you see that? Maybe if I put it there. So. Uh, you can pop it out to, to remove it. Um, when you use it, it sits about there and you can pop it away for safety's sake. So I've got that. That's good for just chopping off loose ends of the bodge wire. Um, so we've got our three wires here. Now, I'm going to be using the tweezers, um, not my fingers, because I've, my fingers have got gloves on them, so they're not exactly super dexterous. Now, the way I've been going about this is I put some flux on the board. Oh, by the way, this is our flux. Uh, again, thanks to my mate Bruce, we're looking at um, Amtec flux, which is what he recommended. So I got myself some of it. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, I think they call it a gel flux. Um, it's in a syringe. So... Um, can you see that? Yeah. Um, and uh, you just pop, press the back and it pops out there. And then when I'm done with it, I just put this thing, which is actually the protector off my uh, tweezers. I just salvage that to use as the cap on the gel flux. And then once we're done with the flux and we're finished with our soldering, this is my uh, solder mask, uh, Mechanic UV, Curing Solder Mask Ink. Um, and we'll be applying this with uh, a small paintbrush. So uh, we'll get to that part of the video later on. This actually might take a long time uh, because that we're, <laughs> we're a lot to do. Uh, anyway, and uh, maybe after we've done it all, we'll... Uh, do a demo of like uh, undoing it so we'll scrub it off anyway we'll think about that at the end and we'll see how we're going so we're going to need our uh, solder our flux and our soldering iron oh, didn't I say to turn that on here was I thinking it had been warming up uh, while I was talking at you but I forgot to throw the switch so we'll let that heat up. Now, basically, the way I go about it is um, I just uh, melt the enamel off the end of the wire um, using the solder and the flux. Uh, and then... Uh, I, uh, I, I did some research about how, how you can uh, clear enamel off um, off wire uh, and there's mechanical which means you scrape it off and there's thermal which means you burn it off and there's chemical which means you dissolve it now we'll be using thermal basically we'll be using but we're not going to be using a torch I do have a blowtorch in fact I bought a blowtorch for this purpose but the flame on the blowtorch is huge and uh, it just looked like it was too, uh, it wasn't precise enough for our uh, application. So I've, I've found that uh, just the soldering iron and the solder can melt off the enamel. So uh, that's the approach that we'll be taking. Now for this, I think I might throw you over um, to this view so you can see um, what I'm doing. Uh, and hopefully I can see what I'm doing too. 
Alright. So let's pop some flux on there. And some solder. Now, what did I say we were going to do? We're going to be doing 22A to 21B. Fair enough. Now I'm using a small chisel tip here. Um, can you see that? Small chisel tip. Uh, I've been playing with them lately. Uh, I had to go at the bevel tip. I didn't like it uh, as much as the, uh, as the chisel tip. So I'm back on the chisel tip. I'm going to load that guy up with solder. And then we're going to start with our, um, our small uh, bodge wire. So this is the 0 0.07 millimeters which is 0 0.003 inches. It is tiny. So we just got to um, melt the uh, enamel off the end of it so that it sticks into our solder. So that's just burning away there now. Actually, I, I could probably um, pop you over to the um, uh, to the Tomlov, which is my other uh, my other microscope. So I'll pop you over there, and I should be able to show you. Yeah? Oh dear, that's really poor quality. Not sure what's wrong there. Yeah, that's not working at all, is it? It's confusing me, I'm not sure what the problem is. Let's see if we can fix him up. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Can you see that? I think you can. So I should be able to just get that in. But it might be better if I hold it with the, uh, the tweezers. Let's see. There we go. Let's see if I can just nudge him into position. So you can see the enamel's burnt off the tip and it's tinned a little bit. Uh, I'm trying to get that in a good view for you. There we go, that's a pretty good view. So um, yeah, you can see the, the enamel is uh, you know still up, uh, up on that side, the enamel is there and on the tip it's nice and tinned. So that's, uh, you know, that's mission accomplished for, for, the, for that part, this part of the of the um, of the exercise. So let's uh, pop you back over to the bench. How's that going? There we go. It's going very well. So uh, let's get this guy. We're going up to 21B, which is here. So what I'm going to do, and this is the opportunity for me to use both my tweezers at the same time, 
And uh, can you see 21? Yes, you can. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bend him just there and pull him up this way. There we go. Try and run him along the middle there. And then here, we'll just bend him back over there. So, um, the idea being that we'll run uh, through the middle of these um, pads uh, and up to uh, 21B. So I might just uh, use some of my Captain Tape. Uh, Captain Tape, have you seen that before? It's, uh, it's just uh, thermal tape. And we'll hold him in place. Alright. Now, pull this guy up a little bit. Now we do the same thing. We just uh, apply heat and and let the uh, the enamel burn off. So uh, I'm just going to add a little bit of flux and a little bit more solder. Can you see that? Yes, you can. Is that in focus? Yeah, I think that's fairly well focused. What about the light? A bit more light. That's probably pretty good. Now this is where we get to use our uh, our Swan Morton blade. Now we're just going to pick him up there and then chop him up there. We got a little bit of wire left over. Uh, that's scrap. So so far so good. I suppose we might as well. Um, give him a bit of a go with the continuity meter. Um, so I'll just turn on my bench multimeter because um, a bit of testing never hurts. So we'll put him on continuity mode and we'll grab the uh, <sighs> crows. You can hear that beep, beep, beep. That's good. And we'll just make sure we've got continuity from here to here. And of course we do. So uh, it's ready to proceed. Now there's no reason to take this tape off the board yet. We'll just leave that there for now. Uh, we'll take it off later. Uh, and we'll, we can fine tune the, uh, the wire just pushing into place a bit. There we go. Can you see that? Yes, you can. Anyway, that looks fairly good to me. Of course, we need to clean up the board, but we'll do all that at the end. Um, I find that I do get a little bit of flux and gunk on my tweezers, um, and so I just hit them with the solder braid. Uh, you probably can't see that up the back of my bench. Maybe you can. Oh, yeah, you can. Okay, good. So take the tweezers, hit them in the solder braid, and it just takes the excess gunk off the top of them. Uh, I do believe they're non-magnetic, so they, they, don't, uh, they don't have magnetic or static or any of those sorts of problems. But uh, if you get flux on there, um, you can make the tips a bit sticky. Alright, so we're going from 21B to 17A. So that's just back down, and we're going to use the next size bodge wire, which is the medium size. <coughs> so... Uh, 
let's just angle him in this way. And I might just use my little thing. Alright. Now we I'm burning the new one in uh, and hopefully not affecting the one that we already had in place. Um, that looks like I've done okay to me. We'll uh, we'll add flux and solar, um, but let's uh, let's continue until he's in place. Yeah. pretty good for me. So let's just burn this guy in. We'll uh, we'll just put a bit of flux on that. And a bit of solar. Just got to burn through that enamel there. So that's uh, that's enamel smoking off there. Of course, it's not only enamel; it'll also be the uh, <coughs> the flux. All right, we might use a bit more captain tape to hold that in place while we work our way along. pretty good to me. Now, I suppose it wouldn't hurt. Never hurts to do a bit of testing. Just check that we're point to point. We're pretty good. That's good. Beep, beep, beep. That's what we want. Now, let's put in our large bodge wire. We haven't chopped him off yet, but we can leave him in place while we do our last one. So uh, we're going from 17A, what did we say, to 14C. So it's uh, across to, okay. Well, let's uh, give ourselves some flux. And Might just tin the tip of this uh, soldering iron. Just got to burn the enamel off the end of this guy. Might just hold that with my tweezers. There we go. Just let the enamel melt. By the way, I've got my iron set at 337 degrees Celsius. I've been experimenting with some temperatures and this one seems to be pretty good. It's 37 because 37 is my lucky number. And uh, my lucky number has been working out for me. So Now we're just going to add some flux and some more solder to this joint. mentioned this was a chisel tip. I've, uh, I've been playing with them. I think I said 
I, uh, I tried a bevel tip. I didn't have much joy with it. And uh, pretty much everyone I've heard talking about on the issue um, recommends you steer clear of the conical tip. So uh, I've heard recommendations for bevel tip and I've heard recommendations for uh, chisel tip. I think it was Dave Jones that said uh, chisel tip, but I'm not don't quote me on that. Dave Jones, of course, is the guy who runs the EEB blog. And uh, my mate Bruce, who uh, recommended these uh, blades and, and these bodge wires, he says that he uses a bevel tip on 400 degrees Celsius, which is kind of insane. He has a hacker meter um, and he likes it. He's got a few complaints about it. Um, but I've heard you shouldn't put the tip temperature over 380 degrees Celsius because uh, the tip melts at that temperature. 380 degrees Celsius, by the way, is just a bit over 700 degrees Fahrenheit. So, let's see if we can just melt the enamel off this last one. Now, I have to say, uh, this big wire is definitely my favorite to work with so far. Um, because it's, it's really... Uh, it's really practical. You can actually see it and move it. And anyway, um, it's easier to work with than the, uh, the the small and the medium. The big ones actually like a proper bit of wire that you can actually work with, rather than hair. Uh, I have to say, all of this microelectronics. I'm just getting into it. When I was a kid, I. Uh, my hobby was electronics, and I haven't really done much since I was a kid. So a lot of things changed since I was a kid. And one of the things that changed was surface mount technology. Everything was through hole when I was a, a, teen, a teenager and a uh, child. I think I got started in electronics when I was 10 years old. Um, and that was very humble beginnings. It was wires and batteries and light globes. And I remember telling my uncle that I'd learnt about doids, um, and he had to correct me and tell me that the correct pronunciation is diode. So, I learned that lesson when I was about 10. That was a long time ago. Kind of a lot's happened since then. I would have been 10 in 1990. Now, the enamel hasn't burned off this as much as I would have liked, so I'm just going to give it a really good go. And ideally we just burn the enamel off the bit uh, that's on the joint, and we don't burn the enamel off elsewhere. We'll, we'll test it in the end and see how successful we were. Um, as I said, I, I haven't got a lot of experience doing this, which is part of the reason why I'm actually doing it. Um, because uh, I want to learn what's going on here. Can you see that? So I'm just heating up this part of the board to try and get the uh, enamel to melt off the, uh, the bodge wire. And we want just enough of it to melt off and not too much. Um, but I really don't know how to tell how well we're faring on that front. Well, something's happening. I don't know if it's good or bad. Alright. Well. I reckon 
That's probably good. Look at this solar fell over there and breached that one. I don't think we're going to hear about that. Might pop in now, huh? I did mention the uh, the desoldering tool. It's just a simple, cheaper one. I have a better one, but uh, I don't think it's important. Oh dear. Didn't work super well. Yeah, that worked. I don't think we need our captain tape anymore. It's uh, Captain C K A P Cap Ton T O N Cap Ton Cap Ton tape. It's uh, it's just thermal resistance tape. It's good for holding parts down while you're doing some soldering. You can also leave it on the board if that's what you need to do. So. We'll just use our blade and pop this guy up over here. There we go. Pop, 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 pop. It'll come off. There he goes. So I've been using the Swan Morton uh, 15C blade. Seems to be working pretty well for me. So now we can see our handiwork. It's, uh, it's got a bit of uh, gunk on it still. Uh, we'll clean that off in a minute. Let's just try and straighten these out a bit. Might actually um, clean it first there. Uh, the flux seems to be uh, affecting them little bit. So we've got some isopropyl. It is not water. It's uh, IPA. It's a type of alcohol. It's good for cleaning circuit boards. Of course you probably know that already. Uh, but if you don't, that's what it is. So we'll hit it with a, a cotton bud. Also for our American friends known as a Q-tip. I don't know if a Q-tip is a brand name or, uh, or, or or what. I don't know why it's called a Q-tip. In Australia, they're called cotton buds. Not to be confused with cotton balls, which are separate things. Not sure what Americans call cotton balls. Now, can you still see what I'm doing? Kind of. So I'm just trying to take the uh, the flux off. Now the uh, the short big one that doesn't move around much at all. N neither does the the medium one. But this flimsy little one that's going a long way, um, it's easy to sort of knock him about. And actually, when I was working earlier. Uh, I did it. I did a practice before I made this one that we're doing together now, and I managed to knock him clean off when I was up to this stage of um, uh, tidying everything up. So um, you want to be careful with these guys because they are really quite fragile. Now I'm pretty sure I've I've cleaned that up uh, properly. So uh, we'll just let the IPA uh, dry up. Try and clean the bench here. So we've got all of our um, our soldering done. And things look pretty good to me. We might have some bridges on there. It's not entirely clear. Um, so let's beep him out and see 
uh, how we go. Actually, I think I still need a bit more IPA. Let's hit him again. I'm happy to get through the Q-tips. I'll use as many as I can because uh, I use the boxes that they come in uh, to store various parts and bits and pieces. And I actually need a few more boxes. Um, so if I can get through the Q-tips, it's probably for the best. Scrub it up, dub. I actually gave this um, mat a bit of a once over just before. I, I hadn't cleaned it in a while and it had dust and grime and all sorts of signs of use, I guess. Um, but it's going to get a lot more use in the future. Shall we pop you over to the uh, to the Tom Log and I'll show you uh, up close what things look like. So, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? I'm pretty happy with that one. And uh, move him along there. That uh, red that you can see there, that's actually a uh, solder mask that I've taken off this board. You can see I've contaminated a couple of those holes there. There's no secrets under the microscope, is there? There's more of that red stuff. I, I, I used this same board earlier and I put solder mask and you can see where it was. Uh, and then this is the, uh, the, the, the second joint. I'm going to redo him. I'll reflow it. Extra flux, extra solder. But it looks fairly good. It looks fairly good mechanically. And then uh, follow this guy over. This is our third joint. Uh, Oh, that looks really quite kind of terrible. So we'll 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 reflow that. We'll reflux it. We'll get plenty of solder in there. And this one over here uh, looks like we could actually um, do a better job with the the uh, the cut. It's too long. Um, so we might hit that with the tin snips, maybe, or the the uh, the cutters. So uh, yeah, all right. Well. I'll pop you back over to the uh, to the Yuzan. Yuzan. How did we go? There we go. All right. So let's just reflow all of these and uh, and and uh, you know march boldly without fear. Actually, I don't know why I'm going to do this this one. Anyway, let's just uh, let's solder up a lot of them, flux up a lot of them. And we'll just reflow the lot. Fresh solder, fresh flux. See how we go. I have to say, I, I really like the smell of this Antec flux. I'm pretty sure that's the smell I like. It might be the enamel on the copper, but uh, something smells really yummy. Isn't that silly? Yeah. Looks fairly good. I wonder, perhaps we'll uh, put them back over on the small microscope, and uh, which is known as the Tom Love. We'll chuck you over to the Tom log and we'll see uh, 
see what these look like now that we've uh, had a second go at them. Might just uh, give this a bit of a clean before I put him over there. It's a bit of flux on the back. Shall I hit it with the IPA? Why not, huh? One, two. Scrub a dub dub. Well, I haven't cleaned the top of this, so there's flux everywhere. Let's see what uh, what those drones look like. Yeah. Sort of looks a bit black, doesn't it? But uh, it's probably okay. And then the trace runs all the way along there. That one looks pretty good to me. It's a bit black. I wonder if I can turn the light up on this guy maybe. Oh no, that light's on full ball. Or maybe that light's not on at all. Let me see. Oh wow, that's bright, isn't it? Wow. Let's turn that down a bit. Okay. So, uh, we're coming from that guy, which is the second one. And we run all the way along here. Oh, that looks terrible. We'll reflow that in a minute. And then he runs over to here. And that doesn't look real good either, does it? All right. Well, let's put you back on the Yazan microscope. And let's have another go at these, uh, at these joints. I'm going to do all of them. I'm just going to reflow them and add solder. Um, the solder is rosin core and there's flux around the place so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Can you see that? Just letting it bubble away. Uh, it's burning out the, uh, the flux and it's burning out the enamel. So let's just make sure there's plenty of solder on there. I don't know how long I should give this. Anyway, that looks fairly good to me. Let's try and get this from this side. Flux is pretty awesome stuff. It really does make a big difference. I mentioned already that I've got that Antec gel flux and I've just started with it actually. Uh, I had a squeeze bottle of, of, of uh, this um, stuff, Chico stuff I picked up off AliExpress. Um, but having uh, heard Bruce uh, recommend the Antec gel flux, I got myself some and I'm pretty happy with it so far. Not sure how we're doing here. We'll uh, we'll just go along and we'll do them all, and then uh, at the end we'll put them under the the tom log and have a close look, see how we've been going. I'm a little bit concerned that if I uh, melt off the enamel uh, further up the uh, the wire, I could create. Uh, a bridge or a short that I didn't intend to create. So I want to make sure that doesn't happen to me. You see, can you see on that one, the, uh, the solder is running along the wire and it's tinning it up, um, which means it's, um, stripping off its uh, uh, enamel, which is what insulates it. So, I don't know. I'm just learning. Uh, uh, caveat emptor, man. That's all I have to say at the moment. Um, anyway, we hit it again. Let's have a look un under the microscope again and see how we've gone. 
So we'll put you over onto the thumb love. And I might just clean the sludge off the back of this thing. fairly good to me and it comes along here to that one that looks all right it's a bit ugly it's functional look how small that that first bodge wire is this is the medium one along to here and that looks okay we'll reflow it but it it basically looks like it could be working and then here's the short little one over to here all right well, let's put you back over to the uh, year's arm and in the shot. So we're just going to reflow these guys yet again. It does seem to be getting better each time. The flux kind of boils and bubbles its way through. I wonder if I should just leave it here until the flux is well and truly depleted. Maybe. Is it possible to use too much flux? I don't know. When I see people use it, everyone's usually fairly liberal with it. just boiling and boiling and boiling, isn't it? I'm going to add some salts to that one. Maybe all of them, actually. I kind of want to hit that. I want to uh, chop it off a little bit. I wonder if I could do that. I don't know how this is going to work out. I just want to chop that off. That worked! Wow, I wasn't expecting that to work, but I'm pretty sure that it did. Oh, sorry, you didn't get to see. There we are. There's a little bit of. Uh, of wire just there. There he is. Can you see that? I wonder. That little speck on the uh, on the tip there. That's uh, that's the little bit of wire that we chopped off. Awesome. I'm going to do these again, again, um, and just let the flux burn off and the solder take. I feel like I could be doing a better job, but I'm not exactly sure what I should do. It does gobble up that solar though, doesn't it? I 
think we're probably good. Now I might give this a clean before we do the inspection under the tom log. So let's just uh, get in with the IPA, which is not water. What am I doing? Show you everything. Trying not to disturb particularly this small bodge wire. The medium one and the big one are fairly solid, but this guy down the bottom here, he's very fragile. Um, when we uh, apply the solder mask, uh, that should help protect it. So we'll, we'll do that. That's the next step. So. Now, we might as well just quickly have a bit of a look at him with the continuity meter. Make sure we're still beeping. We're beeping. All right, so we should be able to go from there to there. Yep. 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 It's working, working, working. That's great. So let's have a bit of a squiz at these on the Tomlov. There we go. Sorry. Just uh, having a bit more of a cleaner. All right. So there. That joint looks pretty good to me. Yeah, that looks all right. And uh, just following along, and he comes to there. That looks all right. It's a bit dirty. You can still see a lot of flux around the joint. But I think the joint is sound. And we follow that guy along to there. I don't know, I might reflow that again. And uh, that one looks really quite happy now, doesn't it? So let's just do the middle two again. <laughs> I, uh, I wonder if I'll get better at this. I assume I will. Um, put him back on here. having a little bit of an issue with this other scope. I'm not sure what its caper is. It's a bit buggy, that Tom Love. It doesn't like being turned on and off. Anyway. So we're just going to be working on the middle too. Let's reform and add in some extra solder. That flux just seems to keep boiling away, doesn't it? I think maybe I've got too much on the board. If you know, let me know. What am I doing wrong? Seem to lose a lot of the solder into the joint itself. 
I'm actually uh, connecting these on um, on a on a hole in the in the board. Um, but usually there'd probably be a component there. Maybe I don't know, or maybe just a pad. I think they're called wires. Just goes to show how much I've got to learn. What do we reckon? Does that look good? To say. Let's have a look at it under the Tom Love again. See what he thinks of it. Now, uh, uh, the Tom Love is wigging out again. what it is. Maybe if I uh, take it back. So that should put me onto the years, huh? Good. And then forward. No, he's not happy, is he? And if I hold down the power button, he doesn't even power off. Oh, there we go. Something happens. How are we doing now? I think that's probably good, isn't it? We're back. Alright. So from the top, that guy looks pretty good still. Following along. That guy. There's a lot of flux still around, isn't there? But the joint looks solid. And... That joint looks all right, but again, lots and lots of flux still there on the board, and that joint also good. All right, so we're going to hit them again um, with the IPA. And a Q-tip. I might just use a little bit of solder braid um, and just see if I can clean up a bit of the uh, stuff that overflowed. So that's once over him again, and then we'll put him under the tom log and we'll see what those joints look like.
Let's clean up the board. Matt a little bit. So, back over to the Tomlov, see what he does. Looks like it's going to work. There we go. Now, let's put him in there. Alright, that guy looks pretty good. All the way along to that guy. Looks okay. It's like a bit dirty still, doesn't it? So, flux. And then, uh, that one that looks pretty good, but it looks like there's flux there as well. And then that last one looks really quite good. Let's just try uh, working on this together under this microscope right now. And just see if we can clean up that, uh, that flux. Does it come up? Yeah. Well, it's no clean flux, so maybe it's not a problem if it stays on the board. I don't know. What do you reckon? I'm inclined just to uh, to let it um, let it burn off. Let's see what happens if we put our soldering iron on that. Let's just see. Whatever it is, doesn't want to come off. <clears throat> Let's put you back over on the year sign. I wonder if we've got a, uh, a bridge there or not. It's not particularly important because all of these uh, wires are isolated. Let's just buzz him out. Works, 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 works. And that isn't actually bridged there at all. No, none of those are bridged. That's good. What about you? I'm just confirming. One, two, three. Mission accomplished, I reckon. So now we go into phase two of this little exercise, which is to um, apply the UV solder mask. Now I found that I like using this. Uh, this is the cap off my uh, isopropyl. And uh, it's good for holding the uh, the solder mask. Might as well turn our iron off. I think that part of our adventure is over. Now we're going to do the solder mask together. So uh, I wonder, can I show you that? Got this cap. And I just squeeze out a bit of the solder, ma solder mask. And then I can just put the lid back on him and chuck him away in the corner. And I've got this uh, brush. It's a very fine tip brush. It's a five slash zero. Can you see that? Five slash zero. I don't know if you'll be able to see the light's bad. Anyway, <clears throat> um, we're basically going to 
uh, take in and we're just going to paint on our solder mask. We might uh, give these guys just a little bit of a of a um, of a touch into the middle. They look pretty good to me. Can you see that? Yeah. Looks fairly good to me. Now, put our brush, and we've got our UV solder mask. So let's go. Now, the way this works is, you paint it on, and then you shine a UV light on it, and it cures. And it's basically insulation and glue. Does both jobs. So uh, it basically hardens up under UV light. Now it's uh, night time in Sydney at the moment. So there's no sun outside. Of course, you can put it in the sun because the sun emits UV. But given that we don't have sun, we'll just hit it with my UV torch, which will cure it. And it doesn't really matter, does it, for our purposes today? Uh, because the only thing we're going to be doing with this is undoing it in the end. I might do that in a separate video. We'll do a video about how to remove a bodge cable that's been done in this fashion. So, uh, Often people will put a bodge wire and it'll just uh, it'll just be an insulated wire and they'll leave it flapping across the board, maybe tack it down with some hot glue. It's certainly an option. But I'm trying to do uh, repairs that are, you know, more permanent and perhaps higher quality in the sense that they're safer. Um, so I kind of feel like putting down some insulation around the bodge wire and sort of gluing it into place on the board is a, a quality thing to do. It's a better type of repair. I don't know if you'd agree with me. Uh, I have no experience with this at all, by the way. I'm just figuring it all out as I go along. Um, but the bodge wire and the solder mask seems to be pretty solid to me. Red's an interesting colour for the solder mask. I uh, I don't recall picking it, so I think there was actually options, and perhaps I didn't even realise that there were options, and I just got whatever the default is. Um, there's probably other colours. Maybe it'll be a thing. Maybe you'll be able to tell in like ten years from now what period. My work came from based on the colour of my solder mask. Anyway, we are in the, the age of red solder mask at the moment. The first age. Now what I'm doing here is just sticking that paintbrush in a, a, a tub of isopropyl that I've got. Um, just to, to clean off the brush. Give the brush a bit of a clean and then I'll stick the brush back on the... Uh, Component, what, are, what did I have? It's a pen brush holder thing that I've got. The brush home, let's call it the brush home. So this is the protective cap for the brush. We'll put him back in there. 
I got a full set of brushes. I got all different sizes, and I, uh, the one I'm using is the smallest size brush. Now we might just give that a bit of a clean off as well. Uh, this is just uh, excess solder mask. Pick that up. And there we go. Now the way this works is uh, it cures under UV light. Maybe if I put you back onto this guy. Yeah, all right. So what we're going to do now is just shine UV light on the, uh, on the work. Might flip you back over so you can see that. It's a little bit psychedelic, isn't it? That's the full, uh, the full work in view there on the microscope at the moment. I don't know if you can actually see it firming up. Not really, I suppose. I'll, uh, I'll run my hand across it in a minute and you'll see it'll, it'll go from uh, being a high sheen to a kind of a matte finish. Have some of my coffee while we're waiting. I actually bought myself a UV light that you can uh, plug into the wall. This one just runs on batteries. So maybe I'll get a UV light stand or something. So I don't have to sit here holding it. I really have no experience with this solder mask. I don't know how long you really expect to keep it exposed. I did read somewhere that it's from a few seconds to a few minutes. So that seems to be about the way of it. I don't think you need to do it for hours. So if we run our finger across there now, you'll see it's gone. It's gone kind of matte. That sheen's come off it. And it's sort of firmed up. So that's it. What do you think? It's a pretty good bodge wire. So the small one, the medium one, and the big one. Uh, all held in place, all sort of solder masked up. I think that might be a good place to end our video. So um, just to recap, we've, uh, we've used... Uh, small, medium, and large bodge wires. We've uh, melted them into place using thermal technique to remove the enamel. We just basically burn it off with the solder and the soldering iron. We used plenty of flux. We gave it a clean. We checked our work as we went along. We buzzed it out to make sure that everything was connected. We painted on UV solder mask and we hit it with UV light. Uh, and we've got a fairly professional looking... Uh, bunch wire so i'm pretty happy with that and uh we might leave it there and uh thanks very much for watching the video and we'll see you next time